Do you ever wonder what happens to your car, to your new Toyota, when it leaves the factory until you take delivery of it? Well, today we are at a Toyota dealership with two brand new cars that just came off the hauler that came from the factory. And I'm going to show you the process from when it comes off the hauler, goes through the shop, and everything in between. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome consider subscribing to the channel check out some of my other videos if you are a returning subscriber well thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and without further ado let's get to work so after the car gets off the hall or into the dealership lot the first person that gets a hold of it is a Toyota technician like myself there's a service that Toyota requires for all new cars called PDI or PDS PDI stands for Pre-Delivery Inspection. PDS, which is actually the official term from Toyota, is Pre-Delivery Service. So it's basically one last chance at quality control because Toyota is all about quality. All their quality checks through the factory, they want one last quality check before the car actually goes out to the new buyer. And my regular viewers will notice that we are not in the usual setup where I film in my home garage. We are actually at a Toyota dealership, which I'd like to give a huge thanks to to Breedemann Toyota in Park Ridge, Illinois for allowing me to come in, use their cars, use their facilities after hours to film this for use. Having said that, I want to say one thing before we start the procedure or the service, the pre-delivery service. Two cars behind me, 2021 Corolla Hatchback and 2021 RAV4 Hybrid XLE. One of them is made in Japan and one of them is made in Canada. We're going to go through the motions and you'll see both cars. Leave a comment, which one do you think was made in Japan and which one is made in Canada? Having said that, let's get the cars on the lift and let's start working on the pre-delivery service. So the first thing under the hood, and you notice everything is nice and new and shiny. However, that doesn't mean everything is perfect. That's the whole reason why Toyota is paying for the shop. So we gotta carry out according to their instruction, which by the way, there is a check sheet that all technicians really have memorized over the years doing this job over and over. But there is a check sheet that gives you exactly what they want you to check and how. So starting off, we're going to do a general inspection. Just make sure there's nothing standing out, no abnormal leaks, no, nothing not tightened, not put right, which from experience, I can tell you, I don't remember the, the last time I saw a leak on a new Toyota or a problem. I mean, Toyota takes their quality of production to the next level and my hat goes off to the people that work at the factory because they really do a phenomenal job and I see it firsthand when it, the cars come in. First thing, just basic fluid checks. We're going to check the oil level, we're going to check the coolant level. We're gonna run a battery test. Now, typically with the batteries, the battery might pass right now, but this car might sit on the lot for two weeks, three weeks, up to a month. So right before delivery to the customer, these batteries will actually get tested, charged if needed, and then life is good because these are new batteries. Now, at the time of filming this video, we have the microchip shortage. So actually all these cars are sold to customers. So we're gonna test the battery, and that'll be that. And also, last but not least, the washer fluid. These cars never come full with washer fluid. We always have to add washer fluid. That's just how they come from the factory. So we make sure the washer fluid is full. Now for the case of hybrids, it is the same thing. We have a little bit more inspection to do. Make sure everything around the inverter, all the red wires, everything looks good. Really, we're not gonna do anything extra. The only thing extra we're gonna do under the hood for a hybrid is gonna be the second coolant, make sure that's topped off and that's at the correct level. And usually we're, I've never really seen problems with the hybrid system when the car is new. One thing that I left intentionally toward the end, there is one thing essential that we have to do under the hood, which is install the short pin. Depends where the car comes from. If it comes from close by, like where I live in Illinois, if it comes from Kentucky, from Indiana plants, they're very close by and literally we get them the same day they're ready to go from the factory. So the short pin is not installed. The short pin is a pin that Toyota removes. It's programmed to shut off all the accessories in the car so the battery wouldn't drain. The 12 volt battery 
when the car is in transit. So that's the first thing we're going to install. And actually both of these cars need the short pin installed because one came from Canada, that's pretty far away. And the other one came from all the way from Japan. Now you might not see this on camera because this car is white. There's actually a wrap guard and you notice this car is very dirty. That's how they come from the holder. They never come shiny or covered otherwise. But this car has a wrap guard. The RAV4 behind me does not. So let's go ahead and remove the wrap guard and I'll show you the beautiful paint quality. And that's why they put these wrap guards for transport, especially for cars that come from far away. Hint, hint here. So moving on inside the car, the first thing you will get some, a lot of papers thrown around. The biggest one that is the most important for me is this one, which has the VIN stickers. I'm not going to show it to you up close because we don't want to show them the VIN number of this car. But another thing is some models. Now you notice this one is a manual transmission, which is actually a pretty cool to still see a manual transmission in 2021, but the automatics, some of them, the cover for the park interlock override, the cover sometimes will not be installed, so we gotta install that. In this car, we don't have that. Some of them actually do come pre-installed, but some don't. So this is the variance between the different model. But one thing we have to retrieve from inside the car is from the glove box, the body plugs. And we'll talk about those when we lift the car up and I'll show you where these go and how important they are. Now we go to the back of the car. You have some all weather floor mats. Let's remove those. You also have the big mat for the trunk. Let's remove that. For those unfortunate ones of us that have to put a front plate, like me in my state, we're gonna have to use this one and install it. So I'll show you how that goes. But those that uh, don't have this, if you buy one, you make sure they don't toss this out because you never know, you might move to another state and now you have to buy this. These can get a little expensive and you paid for them when you bought the car new. So always make sure you find these in the trunk, even if you don't have a front plate, because it's part of your car. Another thing is the center caps. Now, some of the, this model has alloy wheels. The models that have hubcaps, will you'll just find a big old roll of hubcaps here. But in this one, we have center caps. Let's take them out. And the last but not least, we're gonna make sure that nothing was forgotten, that the spare tire is here and it's secure that all the jack and the tools and everything is here. Nothing was forgotten. And in fairness to all the awesome employees of the Toyota manufacturing, I've never seen one missing. Maybe one, that was a very long time ago, but everything is always here, but doesn't hurt to double check because this is after all quality control. Let's lift the car up and look underneath it. Then we're gonna check underneath the car. Make sure nothing is leaking, nothing is missing, nothing seems out of the ordinary, but the most important check is this one. This, folks, is the most important check. The front of the bumper. This is the most common damage area in new cars. When they get off the hauler, these new cars are getting lower and lower thanks to TNGA, so this area is extremely important. It, even as a buyer, when you go buy a car, before you sign that paperwork, I always tell you this, check this area. This is the front, this is the lower part of the front bumper. You wanna check it for scratches. Every technician should check them and note them because if this scratched, yes, some of the scratches might not be a big deal, but you're paying a small fortune for this car. You need to know about that. This is one area that is very important to, during the PDS to check. Now, another area to check is the engine area and transmission. Now, in the newer cars, everything is all covered up and you can't really uh, see much. But as a technician, we'll look through the openings. We'll make sure everything is covered. There is nothing missed before the car leaves because if there's something missed, little oil leak, little coolant leak, now is the time to fix it, not after you take delivery and then you have a giant puddle in your driveway after paying a small fortune. And then the most important thing is the body plugs. These are, this is how they look. They're basically openings in the body. Now, I don't need to explain why this is a bad idea not to install these because this is open to the frame and then you're gonna get water, rust, everything goes south from there. One thing I will note, 
not all of these cars will have the body plugs. Some of them will have two, like this Corolla. Some of them will have none. This will depend on the factory. Initially, the 2018 Camry did have them, but then as we progressed by 2021, we don't have them anymore. They're pre-installed and they're different. So this will change based on when the car is made, what's going on, but if you're buying one, I would look underneath and if you see open holes like this without the cover, bring it up to the dealership because this is a big deal. Another one that is famous for this, rental cars. I am yet to find a rental car that has these installed. That's just the, usually you find them in the glove box in a nice pack. If you see that, these have to be installed. And they're so simple to install. I don't understand why they're not installed sometimes. That's all it takes. That's it. And then let's do the other side. Here's the other side. As simple as that. That's it. The car is protected. I don't have to worry. Let's go look at the RAV4. If you look at the RAV4, it is already installed from the factory. I did not install this one. So these are the variances, but still, you always want to check. If you see an open hole, they're a lot harder to take out than put in. See an open hole like that in your RAV4? That's no good. This is much better. So then, tires. Very simple. The cars that are shipped from far away, they have overinflated tires. The reason for that is overinflation of the tires keeps the tire, prevents the tires from getting flat spots. I've talked about this in one of my storage videos, and this is actually a brilliant idea because we rarely get tires with flat spots. Some of these cars will sit a lot in the port. Depends on the situation. So Toyota, when these cars are shipped from far away, they'll do that. So we have to deflate these because these are way over the max that the tire allows for driving, of course, for storage, it's a different story. They also come with this cover. If you have disc brakes, you'll have this wrap cover just to protect the rotors from splashing, from transport, basically. So you are gonna want to remove those because this car is getting delivered and we're ready to go. So there we go. It also protects your wheel, keeps everything nice and shiny. Let's go ahead and do the same for all four wheels. And then we'll check the tire pressure and then we'll move on to the license plates. Front license plate is very simple. They're usually marked. You'll see two marks. Some of them will have six, seven, eight marks, depends. Some of these bumpers will be shared with other models across the world, which will have different dimensions than the US one. For the US one, it's as simple as that. Two screws, you'll put your plate, put the screws through, life is good. As we near the end of the PDS service, we're gonna do a health check. We're gonna connect the tech stream, which is a Toyota official scan tool. We're gonna do a health check. Now, people will wonder, why are you checking codes on a brand new car? Well, usually when these cars, not all the time, but most of the time, these cars come with codes from manufacturing. They're usually all history codes. They're not current codes. You don't have warning lights. And mainly they're set because of the short pin. So Toyota wants us to go in, check for codes, make sure they're all history, erase all of them. So should the customer at any point check for codes themselves, another shop, whatever the case may be, they would find none. They wouldn't find history and assume there was a problem because all these were caused by the short pin being removed and all these other systems disabled. So right now we are running a health check on the RAV4. Uh, all 51 computers that it has. Yes, Toyotas have progressed with numbers of computers. It used to have three, two, even one at some point. Now we have 51 computers, so now this process takes a while. All this is gonna do, show me all the codes. I'm gonna make sure they're all history, erase them, and then move on. So at this point, we're all done with the inspections of the car. Part of the inspection that I didn't mention is look at the body, make sure, I talked about the front of the bumper, but part of it also is look at the whole body, make sure nothing's scratched, nothing's dinged, the paint is in excellent condition. And from experience, the paint is always good. Toyota is some of the top of the class, paint quality in their paint. Now we're gonna do the function check. And the function check basically is, I'm gonna turn on every single feature of the car, radio, AC, all the accessories, everything. Check that everything works perfectly, that nothing needs to be initialized, that the seats work, if we have electric seats, that the memory seat works, everything in the car, sunroof if equipped, all the features, I'm gonna check them, make sure they work properly. And me personally, I usually combine this with the test drive, which will follow after the function check. Now, 
The dealership that allowed me to do this, they did not allow me to test drive the cars. Of course, I will not uh, push their generosity. But in the test drive, a few things that I want you to note and know that sometimes are common. The steering wheel being center. Now, most people will buy the car, drive it for years and years and never notice that the steering wheel is slightly off center. I notice because I am the car care nut and I am OCD. So if you're paying a small fortune for the car and the technician decides, ah, they won't notice, that's not good practice. The steering wheel should be always perfect. And this is usually what gets technicians in hot waters when the customer buys the car, spends a small fortune, then the very next day come back for something like that. Now, if the car developed a new problem or something happened, that could be not on the technician, but the steering wheel off center, 100% on the technician. And I love my brother in spot. We're humans, we make mistakes too. Part of the test drive, another thing on the test drive is noises, vibrations, pulling from the steering wheel. Does the car pull left and right? Any abnormal noises? Is the power good? Any warning lights that come on while the drive? Now, all of these are things that are not common. I don't remember the last time I drove a Toyota and had a problem in the test drive with a PDS. However, I've seen small rattles here and there, which usually they are very active on on new cars, especially new models. They want to know, they want to fix them. They're very proactive. This is what makes, folks, this is what makes Toyota Toyota. They're really on top of their game with this, with quality. So there you have it, folks. This is the PDS service. Of course, there are a lot of little details that I missed out. I just wanted to make this general video so you can see what gets done to these cars when they come from the factory. What we check, what we look at, the car actually goes up on the lift. A lot of people assume that no greasy mechanic will sit in the car. Well, as you've seen, the seats are covered. Things are clean. Usually technicians, when they sit in new cars, they're aware that these are new cars. And you notice that these cars are not very clean because they came from far away. One of them came from Canada and one of them came from Japan. And we will leave the conversation of Japan versus North American made cars into another video. However, they all come like this. They've been transported. They come out of the factory. They give them a quick wash and they arrive here. Now, after I am done with the PDS, these cars could go two ways. They're either going to go sit on the lot until they're sold. Every month, they, if they stay for a month, they will come back for a battery charge and a general inspection again. If they get sold, then they will go to a soft detail. Now, we're not talking about we're going to shampoo the carpet and all that because the car is new. It's already clean and nobody sits in these cars when they're sitting on the lot. So we're talking about cleaning the outside, making sure nothing happened, keep everything clean. And the cars with the wrap guard, you notice, and I hope the camera can pick this up. This car had no wrap guard. Look how dirty this paint is. I don't even want to touch it because you're going to scratch it. This paint is very, is, is new, is essentially new. It has not a single speck of dirt because this came from the factory and the wrap guard was on top of it. And before we wrap up this video, I want to bring a few things. When you're buying a new car, 99% of dealerships will do all this right. But it's that 1% that ruin it for all of us. As technicians, as people, we are people too. We work very hard and we try to make things right for everybody. However, here is... Uh, a breakdown of things that you might want to know about when you're going to buy a new car in case you happen to be the one dealing with the 1% of dealerships. Check your tire pressures when you buy the car. Drive the car. Don't drive a demo. Drive the actual car you're buying. And before you sign the paperwork, walk around the car. Make sure there's no scratches after it was cleaned and done and ready to be delivered to you just before you go sign the paperwork. If there's any dings, that would be the time to talk about them. If there's any scratches, that would be the time to talk about them, not after you've signed the paperwork and it's yours. Another thing you want to check, the body plugs. And this might be more into if you're a car guy, maybe not a mechanic, but a car guy. Lean underneath the car. Make sure you don't see open big holes. The only exception to that is trucks. Trucks will not have body plugs because they're body on frame. That's a whole different story. Make sure your caps are sitting right. Make sure basically everything you've seen in this video looks similar, that everything works, that everything has been done. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you like this little tour inside the dealership. See how these cars are prepped. And again, 
Thank you, Breedman Toyota, for allowing us to do this. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.